All right, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Flannery. I'm the very proud president and CEO of the South Tampa Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome all of you today to our breakfast briefing, our hurricane prep talk. Thank you so much to our presenters and partners who are here with us today. Thank you to Commissioner Sandy Merman, to Angela Salter from the Fire Rescue Office of Emergency Management, and to Carol Miner from the Small Business Development Center. Thank you all so much for being here today as well as for your partnership throughout the year. I also want to recognize our sponsors that are here with us today. Deborah Palmer from Palmer Home and Business Inventory Services and Star Tierka from Shining Star Insurance. Um, I want to just share a couple other things with you all today to let you know that um, we are recording today's session and we also today will be uh, airing on Facebook Live. So we're really excited to be able to share this information uh, with people throughout the Tampa Bay community. And a couple quick chamber announcements before we get started. Want to let you uh, just remind you that we do have a great resources, uh, business recovery resources page at SouthTampaChamber.org that we're continuing to update for you each and every day as we go through this time of transition. We also have our open for business toolkits available here at the chamber office, or you can give us a call to pick one up. There's also printable signs and resources for you available on the chamber website. And this past week, we have reactivated our hurricane resources page as well. And today's recording will be uploaded to that website later on this afternoon. So without further ado, I wanna take a moment uh, to introduce our sponsors, and then we will get started with our speakers. And so up first, I would like to introduce Deborah Palmer with Palmer Home and Inventory, Home and Business Inventory Services. Yes, Kelly, I know it's a mouthful, sorry. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Um, happy to see you all here. And those of you watching over on Facebook Live, good morning. Um, this is, uh, I think, our fourth or fifth year of uh, doing the um, hurricane prep meeting with the chamber. And I'm always happy to participate. I'm happy to sponsor this important event for the chamber. Um, I know uh, hurricane preparedness may not be at top of your mind at the moment, but it should be. Um, we've become highly skilled at uh, sheltering at home, sheltering in place. So I think we don't need to worry about that, but we really do need to be prepared. And uh, with my business, one of those uh, preparedness tasks is uh, you really should have a complete list of everything in your home, just in case you have to, um, leave um, and in case you incur a loss um, a list of everything that you own with photo excuse me photographs and appraisals and values and that sort of thing can be a lifesaver when it comes to an insurance claim if you happen to have a loss and um, i know many people um, even here in the tampa bay area that have experienced uh, such losses from hurricanes and storms and uh, I have to tell you though, that is a, um, besides the fact that you've got this horrible thing has happened, you've lost your home, now you've got to deal with an insurance company. Um, it's not a pleasant experience, but if you're prepared and you have a list ahead of time, it really helps. So um, I will put a, um, in the chat, I will put a link to a free uh, inventory program that I use um, for you, um, I'm happy to, of course, I'm happy to provide the service for you, but I'm also happy to help you do it yourself. So um, now that we've, some of us have extra time on our hands at home, this is a great time to get your inventory done. So thanks for joining us and I look forward to hearing what the speakers have to say today. Thank you so much, Deborah. Thank you for your continued support of this event. I think you are correct. This is either our fourth or fifth year and both you and Star have stepped up each and every year to uh, to sponsor and so thank you for making this possible and you know remember remember the South Tampa Chamber is a proud client of yours and I do just always like to share we were underinsured by more than $25,000 and because Deborah came in and made sure that we really knew the true value of the assets we have we were able to then connect with our insurance company and make sure that our business is protected above and beyond so thank you so much um, for taking care of that for us and helping us through that process. Um, definitely tedious. And so <laughs> you want to consider using someone like Deborah who can come out and do it for you professionally. Um, we'd also like to recognize and say thank you today uh, to Star Tierka from Shining Star Insurance. And she is our second sponsor for today's event. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you again for joining us. Um, a very valuable webinar or seminar. And uh, I'm glad you're here. 
as Deb said, hurricane is here and we need to prepare ourselves. Um, if the major storms don't hit, the primary cause of loss would be flooding. So that would be something you'd really want to make sure you're protected against. Um, at Shining Star, we are happy to review your current coverage, your policies, um, and let you know what you have. A lot of people don't even understand what they're insured for in a policy. So um, for businesses, we have a prepared uh, package. It has 21 pages of what your businesses should be preparing to do during hurricane season. I will drop some off at the chamber office later today or um, I'll put our email address in the chat box and you can email us and we'll send you a digital copy. So again, it's very good to be prepared. Um, if you have any questions, again, in, in, in insurance, we're happy to help. And thank you, South Tampa Chamber and all of our organizations um, that come together to put this on for us. Thank you so much. To start um, for your continued support of this event as well. And please do feel free to drop those items off at the Chamber office. I also want to share here at the office that we picked up from SBDC yesterday are these um, BERT bags, Business Emergency Recovery Toolkit. And so we have these available that can also be picked up at the Chamber office. Um, and it includes a flash drive and some additional information about checklists and things that you wanna be prepared for. We do encourage all of our attendees today to use the chat feature. A couple quick um, Zoom notes. You can uh, toggle between gallery view and speaker view by using the tools that are up at the top right hand corner of your computer. You can turn on your mute or your video on and off at the bottom left hand corner. And then on the very bottom of the screen, you're gonna see the chat feature and we encourage you if you have questions throughout the day for our speakers that you um, just put your questions right in there and we'll try to address as many of those as we can before the end of today. Again, also keep in mind we are recording today's presentation and all of this information will be available on the Chamber website as well. So now without further ado, we are, uh, would like to introduce Commissioner Sandy Merman. There I am, I was muted. Um, Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be back here again. Um, actually, I think we just got done with the economic recovery talk we had a couple weeks ago. Now we're into hurricanes. Um, and we've had, the, of course, the pandemic on top of all this. So um, I think for a small business owner right now, it's very challenging. And we um, at the county want to make it as effortless and as easy for you as possible to make sure you have all the information you need, um, either through our grant program that will be, we have rolled it out, but the application process uh, will probably be ready in about seven days, just to update you on that. Um, the COVID uh, crisis, the pandemic is still real, and I urge everyone to please wear your mask social distance, um, people have relaxed too much. Our numbers are, I think, going up way too high right now. So please stay safe. Um, so here we are, it's hurricane season. And we, again, want to uh, make sure you have all the tools available um, to be safe. Um, and with that, I ask um, two of my favorite people to be here with me today to help in this discussion, and that's Carol Miner, and she is from our Entrepreneurial Collaborative Center with the SB, um, the Small Business uh, Development Center, and also Angela Salter, and she is with our um, fire rescue. Um, they actually, our fire rescue actually manages our whole emergency operations center. So one day I'm going to get Kelly out there so she can take a tour because it's absolutely fascinating um, to see. We had our meetings when the pandemic first hit, we had our meetings out there uh, for quite a while. Um, and so it's, it's really a great place, but we do wanna make sure you have all the information. In addition to the little kits that Kelly talked about, um, she'll have the hurricane guides, the updated hurricane guides. Um, we're gonna drop those at the office today. So. With that, I'm going to, I think Carol 
and Carol, you're going to be up first, right? Carol Miner. Um, and I will introduce her. Both of these people are very valued employees with our county, and I'm so happy to have them here today. Thank you. Carol, it's yours. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you again uh, for this event. And um, what I'd like to talk to you about is, let me just first go back and say again who I am. I am Carol Miner. I am the manager of entrepreneurial services for Hillsborough County, as well as the center director for the SBDC, also at Hillsborough County. And so this has been a very busy time for us throughout the pandemic, um, working with uh, businesses, as you can imagine, um, through all the various loan programs, and then even preparing for our own um, grant program. Um, but this time now is hurricane preparedness time. And so we turn out our attention, we move from one um, emergency, the pandemic, to um, that of making sure that people don't forget they still have to prepare for the hurricane. And that it's even a little bit more complicated, if you will, because of the pandemic and social distancing. So there's a lot to consider um, as a business and even as an individual. And I know Angela is gonna take us through a lot of the individual um, and I'm gonna focus mainly on business. Um, Deborah had mentioned, as well as, as uh, Star had mentioned, that's not, it's, I forgot your name, I'm sorry, from the Star Shining, <laughs> Star Shining Star Company. Um, when you mentioned that there's, you had a document for businesses in the preparation period. So one of the things we do is help businesses with the preparation help them to understand what that means. Now, we've come through a number of storms that have hit us, not even directly, and we've and sustained su you know, sufficient damage. And it hurts these businesses because just like the pandemic, you're not, if you're not able to operate, guess what happens? We lose revenue, right? And so even for a business, one of the things I always like to remind business owners is, is that it's not just you, it's not just your business it's your employees as well. So we like to make sure that you're thinking about all of those things. Um, one of the things, for example, that you wanna make sure that you do is, you know, you may owe your staff pay. Well, just because you, you have to close for the hurricane, they still should get their pay. And so how are you talking to your payroll company or have you made arrangements that you can still pay folks when they're supposed to be paid even though in a hurricane or an emergency. So we like to say this is hurricane preparedness, but emergency preparedness is what we should talk about. Any type of emergency we should all be prepared for. And so how do we prepare for an emergency? Well, you can never dot all the I's and cross all the T's to be absolutely ready for it, but you should get as close as possible. And you get close by um, considering what kind of risks you are facing during those times. So some of that is the, the risk of flooding, and that's where you would really want to talk to your insurance company to make sure you have proper flood coverage. But aside from that, what does that mean? If I am in a high flood area, if I'm in an area that's subject to storm surge, what does that mean for me in terms of what do I have to do? How do I contact my employees? How do I uh, make sure that things that are important are taken care of? All of us, our new Burt bags, if you saw that, I saw Deborah say, ooh, the Burt bag is nice this year. Well, we've, we've come up to the 21st century, I hope, in that we are moving away from an actual to a bag, to a waterproof pouch. Why? Because it's hurricane season, all right? Mm -hmm. And so we're putting it into a, a, a waterproof pouch and we're getting away from you having to put all this paper together to put in a bag, you want it on your flash drive. Just like we were, Deborah was talking about making a picture of everything in your home, your businesses had the same thing 
and it all should be on a flash drive. And guess what? The flash drive doesn't, should not be in your bag around your neck, even though it could. It should be someplace else that's not subject to hurricanes, you know, so that you can, have, you can retrieve that information when you need it. Right, so we are trying to move move you along to, along the the, the uh, thought of what happens if you know. So if you're in a situation, what happens? You have to really sit down and think about the risks that the risk won't be the same for everyone. If you're in a flood zone, it may be the, that may be the same. But what if you have you know um, high powered equipment and things like that? Everybody doesn't have that, so you have to assess what your risks are, and then make sure you are prepared for those risks. It may mean that during hurricane season, equipment that's sensitive, you know, are not on the floor. You know, we shouldn't have equipment on the floor anymore. If you're in those kind of areas, they should be raised to kind of help protect those things. Those are minor things or seem minor things, but these are all the things that give you peace of mind as a business owner that you're, you're uh, protecting your goods, you're protecting your, your equipment. And then, of course, you want to protect your employees. There is, I do want to share my screen for this flyer that I have. I'd like to share with you all. Because it has some information on it. Can you all see that? Mm -hmm. Good. Hmm. So this is our flyer. You're going to see, you should see a lot of this from different um, chambers from all of our business partners, um, all over this flyer should be around because the flyer wants to remind you what we should be doing. So we see this, look, that, that flyer has what we call blue skies. It's a black and white flyer, but they have blue skies. And so even in blue skies, you see the window things are boarded up. Well, this is normal during hurricane season. When a hurricane is coming our way, we see things boarded up, right? What is that speaking to? That's speaking to preparation. They're preparing. There's no rain. There's not nothing happening there. They're preparing. And that's what we want folks to do. There's a number here that I like to, a website I should say, that I like to make sure you take down. And it's Florida Disaster. And one of the things I discovered, the floridadisaster.biz site must have been down the day that we were looking at it, Robert. And we had our graphics person change it to org. And then we found out it really is biz. So the site must have been down when we were trying. So we thought we made an error. There are two sites. But the one businesses want is floridadisaster.biz, B-I-Z. You want to register your business. Why? Because when you register your business, a number of things, it does a number of things. One is that we know that you get, first of all, you'll get information as it's coming about. They wanna make sure you have information. But the other thing is if you have damages, you can record your damages there so that we can take, we'll give you a call. Our team calls everyone who suffered the damage within Hillsborough County, we call them and we go visit to make sure and see how we can help them with their damages. You're uh, immediately linked to the emergency bridge loan um, fund because we operate that fund. Well, we work with that fund. We don't operate it. Um, we package for that fund, if you will. So that's one of the things you want to make sure that they're not only that, if you're a business and during that time, depending on what you have, there may be need of your services. There may be need of your products. And so when you're registered, we know where we can get stuff as well. So it's a good place to make sure that you're registered. The more businesses we're, that are registered, the better off the whole entire county is because we know where our businesses are, we know what they need, and they know, we know how they can even help us. The other thing that's on this, this flyer that's important is this, the um, link on the bottom for your employees. Remember I said that your employees are just as important as any other part of your business. And so you wanna make sure that they are registered with um, Hillsborough County, Florida, Gover.net, Florida, Hillsborough County, Florida alert. <laughs> um, so, and they, or they can even do it online or they can call the number there. And so what happens is that makes, that gives them a direct link. They will be in the Everbridge and they'll get notices about things as before they're happening. We want to make sure that the county is absolutely alerted that everyone knows what's going on 
and we know that that's essentially important. And so uh, Angela can, will be talking more about those. But I think the other, the last thing on the slide that I would bring up to you is that the, in the middle of the flyer, it has a number for you to reach Robert Pierce. Now, Robert Pierce is our business continuity professional. So he is responsible for meeting with the businesses, helping you with your continuity plan, helping you um, even referring you to insurance professionals and such that will help you assess your risk. Someone like even Deborah Palmer, who could go in and, and make sure you uh, um, get the right insurance for the, inf for the stuff that you do have in your business, as we've already heard Kelly attest to. And so you work with, he'll work with you in that process. We're, we're a no cost service to you, um, but we are very educated people. I want you to know that. Why I say that? Because a lot of times people think when you don't pay for something, it has no value. I can tell you that the county makes sure that we have all the resources that we need to be able to help the businesses throughout the county. And part of that is constant professional development. And so you have someone who's knowledgeable in this area who can work you through, walk you through the areas in, in, uh, of um, developing a plan for your business. No two plans look alike because businesses are different. And so we can work to customize a plan that works um, for your business. That's all I have. Um, if there's any questions, I know there's a, a time for questions later on. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Great presentation, Carol. Um, if you go on floridadisaster.org, what happens? I didn't have time to do it on my phone. Okay, well, if you go to floridadisaster.org, you can still get to floridadisaster.biz. Okay. It's an information okay. Good. site. Both of them are relevant sites. You won't be going to a no, no place. But the biz one is designed specifically for the businesses to register. Good. If you go Good. to floridadisaster.org, you, you find tons and tons of information um, that's relevant for the hurricane season period. Awesome. Well, uh, really great advice. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to introduce Angela Salter, and she is going to talk to you about hurricane preparation. Oh, good yeah. morning, everyone. Angela Salter from Fire Rescue, the Office of Emergency Management. A lot of times I really try to make sure people realize that um, we are a division of Fire Rescue, the Office of Emergency Management, and we coordinate with hundreds of um, different partners, whether it's TECO, the um, um, Public Utilities, City of Tampa, Plant City, all of the other municipalities, we coordinate with them to strategically make sure that our citizens um, get the best care possible during disasters. Um, <clears throat> I love what you all said. I almost feel at home like we all should be, you guys should be my new best friends when I go out on the road um, because I feel like all the information that every single presenter has given, um, even from our insurance um, um, partners over there, um, has been really truly effective and it's so truthful um, when we want people to be starting to be prepared. So some of the things that I usually talk about to people is packing a disaster kit, making a plan and staying informed. Those are all the ways that we request people to take, take um, the initiative to make sure that they can take care of themselves. We're all about educating the public, educating you, you all to make sure that for seven days, we used to say three days, but now it's seven days that you can really take care of yourself if a first responder can't get to you. Um, I start off with this. We know that you love yourself. We know that you love your families. And we know that you all care because you're absolutely here today to um, even hear what I'm going to say to you. So at the end of the day, um, and even if you guys want to put, I see how many people are here. If you have already made a plan, plan A, plan B, plan C um, for you and or your family. And then at the end of what I'm going to say, I want to see how many people say, well, you know what? I might actually make a plan, okay? So um, making sure that your disaster kit on our website and on, and I'm going to keep saying these two websites, um, hcflgov, Dot net, our Stay Safe, Hillsborough County Stay Safe website, and uh, ready.gov. Those are two extremely important websites 
that will give you the ABCs, the one, two, threes on how to make a plan and prepare you and your family for any type of disaster. Um, uh, I won't go through, you know, water, food. You want to make sure that your food, again, um, protein bars, peanut butter, um, things that won't go bad quickly. You want to make sure that you have at least a minimum of two weeks of medication. Most doctor's office will give you that um, starting on June the 1st. They will give you additional medications to make sure you have it through the um, season. You want to have your personal hygiene items. This year, we've kind of added the face mask due to the pandemic. Um, we've added that information to your personal hygiene kit, more sanitizing wipes, hand sanitizer, and gloves, so that if you have to go to a shelter or go to a family and friends, you bring all of those extra items with you. Um, important documents, as Carol has stated, um, for businesses, let me just say this. Um, the way your business gets up and running better is to make sure your employees are taken care of. Um, so I do think that in every business, you want to add to your kit to make sure you speak to your employees, okay, to make sure they have everything they need. They need. The next thing we want to go through is how do you make a plan? How do you prepare yourself? You have to ask yourself these questions. Do I know my zone? Do I know if I'm in a flood zone? If you have pets, you want to make sure you prepare for your pets. If you need special needs, special needs in your family, you want to make sure they understand and know exactly where to go. All of this information, again, can be found on our hcflgov.net, our Stay Safe website. Um, but you want to make sure you list everything that your pertinent family member needs, whether it's a senior individual that you're going to be helping. I would certainly hope, like for my parents, I have on their medicine cabinet, I have a plastic bag. I just grab that plastic bag and throw it in their bag. And that's their extra medications. That's the number to their doctors. That's all of that information because I'm going to be responsible to make sure my parents are in a safe place. So again, when you make your family plan, you want to make sure your family plan is catered to you. On our hcflgov.net stay safe website, you can find the zone, your evacuation zone. We really try to encourage people to know whether you're in evacuation A, B, C, D, E now versus when it's a hurricane. Um, during Irma, we had thousands of people trying to go to that website and as you can imagine, with so, you know, two, three, four thousand people trying to find out all at once whether they're in an evacuation zone, it crashed the system. So we try to tell people, make that a part of your preparedness plan. Do a checklist that has, do I know my zone? And anytime I am speaking, when it comes to preparing yourself and your family, the main goal is to make sure that you include everybody in the family. That way, everybody knows the same thing your evacuation plan. How early do you go? How far do you go? You know, we always try to tell people you don't have to go thousands of miles. You just go tens of miles. You want to be outside the evacuation zone. You want to be outside a flood zone. So again, we try to tell people you don't have to go out of town. You know, people get stuck on the roads. You want to make sure you have gas. You want to make sure you have small bills. These are just some of the things that you will find um, on our website. What happens if you have to shelter in place? You need to make sure that your family, your entire family knows what room to go to. Do you go to an interior room? Do you go to a room with no windows? You want to make sure you have your, your radios, um, your flashlights, and your batteries. So again, if you know that place to go to, you want to have a bag in that particular place, again, with tuna, peanut butter, all of those things you know where you want to go. And by all means, on anything and everything you do, you want to stay informed and you want to make sure that you are listening to your local media channels. One of the other things that we like to try to explain to people is, although a lot of people always call us and say, we want a hurricane. What do we do for a hurricane? What do we do for a hurricane? I want you to be aware that there's so many other disasters that we want you guys to plan for. There's things like wildfires, active shooters. These are still disasters. Flooding, 
um, hazardous material incident, if you have um, a gas leak, um, this pandemic disease that we're in. So we want you guys to think about what do I do with me and my family? What are the needs that we have? And on our new guides this year, our disaster guides, we actually added some of that information. We have an entire page on the different um, preparing for the different disasters. And we just give you some sharp bullets on what are the things that you need to do. Um, <clears throat> we also added some different myths and some facts for everyone. And then we added some information that speaks to property, your property, what do you need to do? How do I make sure that my property is safe? How do I make sure that I clean it up and be ready for a disaster? Uh, information on portable generators. Um, again, we talked to you about evacuation zones versus flood zones. We want you to know the difference. Your flood zones are based upon insurance and flooding. Your evacuation zones are based upon making sure that you can get out of an area that you need to evacuate. One of the things that we always tell people, it does not matter if you live in a mobile home, if you are in an evacuation zone or not, you must evacuate out of the mobile home. Manufactured home, mobile home, you must evacuate. Um, one thing that I really like to talk to people about is storm surge. Most of the time people don't understand that the storm surge is the biggest thing. I usually tell people if you stand up and maybe you're four feet tall, maybe you're five feet tall or somewhere in the middle and maybe a little bit over. But when you start hearing words like um, the storm surge is gonna be 15 feet, 10 feet, where if you're only five feet, then 10 feet is five more feet above you. That gives you a visual of what storm surge really is. It gives you a visual of why we say, you know, we definitely need people to get out of the way of the storm surge. Believe it or not, most people don't realize storm surge kills more people than the actual hurricane. So these are some of the words that we want people to realize when um, they hear uh, based upon the news and the media talking about storm surge. Um, the other thing is when we talk about the shelters that we open, and I want everybody to really, really think about um, if you have a plan, whether or not you need to revise that plan if your plan is going to a shelter, especially now that we have this pandemic. Um, we are not, we definitely want people to be safe. That's our number one issue is to keep people safe. So if you need to go to a shelter, we want you to go to a shelter. But if you can go with a family or a friend, um, a neighbor, because they're in a safer um, home, then that's what we want you to do. We want you to have something um, over your face. We want you to take your baby wipes, your Germex, your alcohol, your first aid kit. Um, the easiest thing that I usually tell people is get you a nice backpack and put your stuff in there really, really tight so that you can go to a neighbor's or what have you. Because again, with the pandemic and sheltering individuals, you all know that you're going to be in there with lots of people and so we are working on ways to see how do we really shelter and keep our citizens safe. And that protection gear um, is going to be um, vitally important mm -hmm. if you have to go to a shelter. The other thing about using our shelters or using shelters would be, please, 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 I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to stay tuned to your local media channels so you know what shelters will be open. Although we give a list of shelters, um, if a school has a fire or if a school has a flood, then we may not use it because things happen. So we want you all to make sure that you listen to your local news to see which shelters are open and when they are going to open. Um, we did double our capacity for uh, pet friendly shelters this year. So we want you to know where our pet friendly shelters are. We have those listed. They fill up very, very fast. And we want people to know that it is um, the citizen's responsibility to tend to the pet, although you are in those shelters. Okay, that means providing your food, water, medications, make sure your pet is um, tagged and they have um, their shots. So that is vitally important information. Again, 
evacuation zones if you need transportation. We have information in there. We have information, again, on your special needs if you have a senior. And we actually added this year, too, important contact information. Now, even though we have important contact information like building and development information, law enforcement, um, natural gas utilities, electric utilities, we want you to make sure that you have your numbers stored, whether they're in your cell phone. And let me not say whether they're in your cell phones. We want you to store them in your cell phones. We want you to have your paper copies because remember, you do want to get back to your home. So when we call, <clears throat> say that the roads are, are open, when you're getting ready to re-entry, we do want you to have some type of paper trail that you will be able to show, hey, my name is Angela Salter, 1033 is my address. They're going to be looking for something, your ID plus a utility bill, an insurance card to make sure you can get back um, to your place of residence. Because most of the time people just want to run and say, I just want to see my house. I want to make sure all my things are there and, you know, nobody's pilfering and all these other things. So you want to make sure that you have the right information to um, be able to get back home. With all that being said, I want to make sure everybody understands that everybody's situation is very different. I have different plans, plan A, plan B, plan C, all these different things, because I know I need to respond whenever there's a disaster. So I need to make sure my kids are okay, my parents are okay, and my grandchildren are okay. So having plan A and B and C, yes, I have that many plans, um, was good for me. But I will say this, I went to the panhandle um, during Hurricane Michael, um, or right after Hurricane Michael. This is the one thing that I did not plan for. And I wanna leave this um, in your minds. I'd like for just a moment for you to close your eyes and just envision nothing but blue skies. That's it. So when I went to the panhandle, it was very quiet. One of the young ladies that I was walking through said, do you hear that? And I'm looking at her and I'm listening really hard. There was absolutely nothing. And now when you open your eyes, you see all of the things that we have around us. There was nothing. I went through 12 counties. Some counties had nothing, nothing. Some counties on the right-hand side, there was homes that were damaged, but on the right-hand side, there was nothing. you went through another county and it just looked like an explosive. Something exploded all over, everywhere. So the reason I tell that story is because I never made a plan to come home to nothing. I saw people with tents in front of nothing but rubbish, but that was their home. That was all their pride possessions. And so I only urge people to take 20 minutes, 30 minutes to sit down with your family and make a plan and then make another plan. You have to practice your plan. I have a three-year-old that can tell you how to get from Hillsborough County to Pasco County where she lives on I-275 and on I-4 or on the street. She can tell you three ways to get home. And if I take a particular interstate, I-275, she's asking me, why didn't we get on I-4? She's three. But that's because I talk to her so she'll know, hey, it's an accident, a bad accident on I-4. We're going to take I-275. And that's your day-to-day -day language. And so those are things that you can do that's called practice with your smaller children. And the only thing I'm saying is I don't tell her somebody died or, you know, what have you, but I do say there's a bad accident. And so she understands disaster. So again, I'm going to say these two and I'm going to put these in the chat. HCFLGov.net. Stay safe. 
and reading.gov. If you go to those two websites and just the links that are there, it will tell you how to talk to your children. It will give you games that you can play so that they understand disasters. It will help you help your child complete a disaster kit for themselves. They feel a part of it. They're not afraid of it. And they have an understanding. My, my role here for you today is just to get you to number one, start thinking outside of the box. I know that you love yourself and I know that you love your family. And so I'm only asking that you just take the time. If it doesn't happen, then no harm, no foul. But I urge you the question is not if it will happen. The question is, when will it happen? Mm -hmm. And so with that, I will leave you all. I thank you for paying attention. I thank you for being here. And we really appreciate the support that South Tampa Chambers gives to their citizens. Because I tell you, it takes all of us. It takes mm -hmm. all of us to really, really make this work. We are resilient. I mean, if you look at everything that was going on with the weather now, with the protesters, and with the pandemic, this tells you that we are Tampa strong, and that we're resilient, and that anything that we put our minds to as the citizens here, this county that we love, our beautiful weather, everybody wants to be us, and everybody's trying to get here with us. So let's just keep, let's keep an open mind and let's just do it as a team thank you that was great angela that was thank awesome you. both angela and carol what a team our a team thank you. out here to help people so um kelly i'll turn it back to you for questions absolutely well first of all again commissioner merman thank you so much for being here with us this morning i know that these past several weeks and months have probably been some of the busiest of your elected career so yes. we appreciate you continuing to take the time to come out, join our chamber, speak with our members. I know you've been spending quite a bit of time with us, helping you know walk us through the things that have been happening locally. So appreciate you and your service to our community. Thank you so much to Angela and Carol for being here with us this morning. Awesome information. Um, Want to remind everyone that the South Tampa Chamber does have a hurricane resources tab on our website. And I wrote down all the websites that were mentioned today, so I can double check. I believe we have all of those up. But just in case we don't, we'll make sure we get all those websites up there. So it's a nice, easy one-stop shop place for people to find all the things we talked about today. Wanted to just again remind you, we have 25 of these little Burt bags. Don't worry, Deborah, I have one saved for you. It's right here on my desk. I heard you say earlier, you're excited about the new bag. Um, Burt stands for Business Emergency Recovery Toolkit. There's a flash drive inside and a checklist for documents and things that you need. It's a little waterproof pouch, the great little top on it. So we have 25 of these. Star mentioned that she's going to be bringing some materials by Commissioner Merman's going to be bringing some materials by. So we'll have lots of um, these little kits available for anyone who wants to come by the chamber to pick those up. Um, and now let's open it up for questions. I'm just going to um, take a look here on the chat, see if there was anything in particular um, that anybody wanted to ask about. Or if you have questions, um, please feel free. Um, you should be able to unmute yourself if you have a question you want to ask directly to one of our speakers. Um, and then also, um, any of the information from our sponsors today, we will send a follow-up email out this afternoon. So all the links to everything we talked about, as well as uh, the stuff that's been put in the chat. Good. But um, this has been awesome information. And thank you so much for, you know, mentioning um, both Angela and Carol that, you know, because of the, just the general state of affairs right now with COVID that we do need to take some additional precautions this year as part yeah. of our planning process. And the CDC did put out some great information on their website specific to hurricane prep as well. Mm -hmm. So any questions from anyone? There's a question here. What is the official website to know which flood zone that our business or home is in? Okay, Angela. You can actually go to HCFL gov.net mm -hmm. slash stay safe and I did enter that into the chat group and click on um, evacuation zone or click on flood zone put your address in and it'll actually let you know what flood zone or if you're in a flood zone and the evacuation zone 
Thank you so much. There was a You're question. Very welcome. Um, office hours for the chamber. Yes, we're here Monday through Thursday, nine to four, Fridays, nine to three. Um, the door is locked because we're not open to the public, but if you ring the bell, a staff member will come out um, and we'll let you into the lobby to pick up your kit. Um, any other questions that anyone has for our speakers? I mean, we have such a good team. They covered everything. They did. This was incredible information. Again, just to remind everyone, if for some reason you missed something or if you were taking notes like I was, um, we're going to have this recording. It's been live on our Facebook page, so that recording will, will be there moving forward, and then we'll have it uploaded um, on YouTube and on our website later today as well. Um, well if there's um, what, there's a good question. question on the chat about what do you have, what happens, Angela, if you have someone in a senior living center? So all senior living facilities should already have a disaster plan. They should have included this additional um, pandemic in their disaster plan. And you can contact them to see what is their plan right. of action during the disaster. I think that's really um, good. Just make sure they're as prepared as you are with your house. <laughs> Yes. And um, just on a separate note, you all know that the governor ch um, changed um, the law a couple years ago after Irma so that they all have to have a generator. So those generators should keep them going. And um, they all have PPE, that protective um, e um, gear, whether it's gloves, um, facial equipment. So they should already have that information. Um, in place already. So those are the things that they're supposed to do. And they're supposed to do just like us. They're supposed to have the additional food. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to have all the medications. So they should already have a plan. And we do have, um, they do submit their plans here to Hillsborough County Office of Emergency Management. So we have to approve those plans. And they also have to go through um, the investigator's office to make sure that they have their generators in place. Good. Angela. Angela, yes, ma'am. Um, I work with one of the senior living communities in South Tampa, and what the information you're giving is exactly correct. I know one of the things that we are in the process of doing is going to our families and our residents and asking them, um, because we are in an area where we would definitely have, have to, to evacuate, evacuate. residents, mm -hmm. even with generators that would help us get back sooner mm -hmm. but we could not sit in place you know with a really bad storm coming mm -hmm. but one of the things that we're trying to get ahead of is knowing you know are we taking all of our residents with us or do we have family members that prefer to have their residents with them so we do have those plans in place, but I think if you're a family member of somebody that is in a community, it's something you need to talk about as a family and you need to have some preparedness about and not be trying to make that decision at the last minute, last minute. because we're trying to plan to get our residents out and get them to the safe location. And depending on how many are going with us, we may have plan A and plan B. <laughs> so. Yes, they do. So some of the uh, ALFs, assistant living facilities, some of them have it where they relocate um, the individuals to their sister um, mm -hmm. locations. And some of them have made contact with family members or family members have said, we will take our parent out um, if something happens. So that is correct. Yeah, in our uh, one case, of things we actually have arrangements um, with Disney as well. So it may be a sister community or it may be one of the Disney resort hotels that we go to. It would all depend on how far we had to go, mm -hmm. how many sister communities that we may evacuate to are affected by the same storm. But just remember, storms don't keep on their course. Remember, we yes. used to say, yeah. don't pay attention to the black line. It's mm -hmm. that tone. Yep. And um, it, we saw it happen here. It Everybody went to Orlando, and then the storm shifted to Orlando. Yeah. So um, yeah. just be careful and make sure you stay attentive with uh, weather reports and what oh, comes yeah. from our emergency operations center. 
Yes, and it's funny that you say that one of our myths is I'm not on track, cone of uncertainty, so I'm okay. Um, we, we can't tell people enough. Um, communication, communication, listening to your local stations, because again, um, a lot of people ask us, why do we make snap decisions? Why do we change our minds so much? And it's not really the Office of Emergency Management that changes its mind. The weather, very unpredictable. Yeah. <laughs> very good points well thank you again so much to everyone thank for you. here today um, we are going to go ahead and wrap up the formal part of our program but I will leave the zoom open for a little bit longer so if we have any additional um, Q&A please feel free to, to stay for a bit again want to say thank you to Commissioner Merman thank you to Angela with the Office of Emergency Management. And yes, I will take you up on your offer to come tour. I love learning new things about our community. Thank you to Carol from SBDC. Carol, we just are so thankful for our relationship with SBDC and all the support you've provided for our businesses throughout the past couple of years, but really these past several weeks and months have been incredible. And of course, events like today would not be possible without um, great community partners and sponsors. Thank you to Deborah Palmer. Palmer Home and Business Inventory Professionals and Star Tirka, Shining Star Insurance. Again, SouthTampaChamber.org is going to have the link to everything we talked about today. Also want to remind you that um, if you're joining us via Zoom, on the bottom left-hand side of the chat, there's three little dots. You can click that and it's going to allow you to download all of the information that was put in the chat today. We'll also send a follow-up email out to our membership later today. Thank you again to all of our speakers. Thank you again to our sponsors. Um, and we look forward to getting through this hurricane season the same way that we've yes. had these last several weeks and months. Um, and that's getting through it together because we know we, that, that we are stronger together. So thank you all so much and have a wonderful rest of your day. Great. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay Bye. safe, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.